Welcome to section 1.1, Functions and Change. This video will be just one part of this section. I'm, trying, I'm going to cover pages 1 through 4 in your book, so we're just going to go through these and I'll make short videos of each topic. So, um, today we're going to talk about what a function is. We're going to recognize um, a function as a table, a graph, a formula, or in words. We're going to wait on the domain and range, and we're going to just talk about this today. It's just going to talk about this part, these, this two, is what is a function and how can we show what it is. All right? So, function definitions. Functions are central to everything we will study in Calculus 1. It's extremely important you understand what it means to be a function and how to manipulate functions. So, the questions I have here are what are functions, how are they defined, and why are they important to calculus? So let me give you a little background. At some point in your life, you might have thought, the faster I drive, the quicker I'll arrive at location X, whether it's home, school, the mall, etc. If so, then you understand the idea of a function. You are stating that there's a relationship, that's important, there's a relationship between the speed at which you drive and the time that it takes you to arrive. So there's a relationship between those two. The importance of functions. Functions are central to all of science, business, and computer science since these fields all focus on associations between variables and then attempt to make the predictions based on these relationships. So the key word I want you to notice here is relationships because you're doing a relationship. Okay? So let's start with the definition of functions. So let's talk about the de definition of functions. So a rule that assigns let me erase this line here signs to each input number called a domain element that's an M right there guys a domain element and I'm gonna put a little line here because it's the word exactly and I'm gonna put a little arrow there exactly one number called a range element Now, I am not, I mean, I like words, and I've done definition of a function forever. However, I like to see pictures, kind of. So I'm going to show you. This is what you're kind of used to. You're used to the point x, y, okay? And if you were going to graph, I'm just going to show quadrant one here. If you were going to graph this, this would be your x and this would be your y. And everybody's like, yes, I know that. Well, that means you're saying there's a relationship between x and y. And then last year, what you did was, we talked about an Algebra 2 trig, is that now y we can actually call f of x. So the point now changes, basically, from x, and then we can say f of x, which is the function of x, which is y. Okay, so that is using um, notation, function notation that we um, started last year. So there's your new point. So the x becomes your input. So here's your point. So now it's your x, okay, is your input your y or your f of x is your output. Okay, so here's your point, x, y, or x, f of x. So, see how your x is your input and your output is your f of x. You can also call your x your independent variable. Pendent, sorry I had to spell that. And your output, your dependent, because the output or the y value, if you will, is dependent on what you put into your x. And then to bring in domain and range, your x was your domain, and your f of x or your y was your range. Okay? So there is kind of a definition of a function. So let's go to the next page. So let's look at some functions, and we'll look at some examples. And we're going to be graphing and doing things in class, but I wanted you to see. Now this one's y equals x squared minus 1. So if I was going to draw this, okay, 
it's going to cross here at negative 1, and it's a parabola because it's x squared, so it's a parabola like this. And if you're going to make a good sketch, we always do x, y, and show where it crosses, so that's a good sketch. So there's that, all right? So I want to know if this is a function, right? So let's do some of the points on there, and we can graph it and look at it. But if you were to graph it and do the table of this, and did x, y, and figure out the points and looked at them, it, you would have a negative 4, 15, a negative 3, and then you'd get an 8 if you put that in there. If you put negative 2, you'd have a 3. 0, you have a negative 1. I'm skipping some. 4, you would have 15. 3, you would have 8. Actually, I'm out of order here. I'm sorry. And 2, you'd have a 3. So I just picked some points. I'm kind of out of order there. <laughs> And if you look at it, every single x has its own y. So I look and see, I don't, I see repeats here. The y's are different, and the y's are the same here, but the x's are different, so I'm okay. All right? So yes, I can say this is a function. This is a function because every x has a unique y. All right? Every x has a unique y. The other way to look at it is you guys learned the vertical line test. And if you draw the vertical line test, you see where it only crosses in one spot. So that is an easy test also, is to check for the vertical line test. So let's put this here, because I know you learned that. And I everybody loves the vertical line test, and I don't want you to forget it. So, But I just want you to notice that every x has its own value of y. Okay. So the x is, so a quick way is to say, oh, my x is don't repeat. That's a good way to kind of look at it, all right? Vertical line test, test is the best. Now, if I graphed y squared equals x minus 1, so if I took the square root of both sides to do this, you'd have y is plus or minus the square root of x minus 1. So I took the square root of both sides. So you know what this really looks like, guys? Sorry, I keep hitting that. It looks like a parabola sideways. So it crosses here at 1, and it kind of looks like this, all right? Actually, if you were going to graph this in your calculator, you couldn't because it's, it's not a function, because look at the vertical line test. So I can say no, but let's put some points in there, because I see it fails the vertical line test. If I did some points here, and I put some in here, I would have, let's pick some. If I put a 1 in there, I'd have a 0. If I put 2 in there, I'd have a 1. If I put a... 2 in there, I could also have a negative 1, okay, because it's plus and minus. If I put a 10 in there, I'm trying to find nice numbers, I'd get a 3, but if I put a 10 in there, I could get a negative 3. So do you see how the x's are kind of repeating? And you can tell because it's, it's hitting the x's twice. So no, this is not a function. All right. I love the vertical line test. I don't know about you. So let's talk about input and output. So your input variable is usually x. It's also, we call it an independent variable. And I already kind of alluded to that earlier. That's a D. Come on, right. It's a D, guys. I don't know why I won't write. There we go. And the output variable is y. Or, now that we're in calculus or pre-calculus, it's f of x, the function of x. This is my dependent. It's a d, guys, not a b. Dependent variable. Okay? It depends on x, all right? So let's look at this. Let's talk about, we're doing some words here. So I have the number of cans of paint needed to paint a room is a function of the total surface area of the room in square feet. So first thing I always do is I'm going to call this P for cans of paint. And I've got, we're going to use A for surface area. And when they said this in words, I can say, oh, the number of cans of paint is is equals, so see the word is, is equals a function of, so do f of a, okay? Soon as I rewrite that English sentence into a math sentence, I now can say, oh cool, I have p equals f of a, this is my input, this is my output, so that's really the point a comma p. Because I, if I put in the a in my f machine, 
out will come the number of cans of paint. Now when you do this, I want you to label what this is. So the surface area is in square feet, and this is the number of cans of paint. So the number of cans of paint depends on how big your room is, which makes sense. So now if I give you this expression, okay, f of 250 equals 3, you can look here and say, okay, what is in the parentheses? Oh, the parentheses must be area. So that stands for 250 square feet. And equals 3, the 3 must stand for the cans of paint. So if we were going to write that, um, so let's kind of look at it. So I know that, oops, sorry. I'm sorry, I get all excited here. So let's go back down. So if I was going to write that, I would say, okay, this, so let's label this, is square feet and its area. This is number of cans of paint. So the units, when they said, what are the units? Well, this one's square feet and the three is number of cans of paint. So now I can say, what does this mean in words? Well, there's two ways to write this. You can say this. You can actually say it left to right and say, okay, if I have a 250 square foot room, I'm going to need three cans of paint. Or you can read it right to left and say, well, I'll need three cans of paint to paint a room with 250 square feet. So it doesn't matter which way we write it, but I'm going to do this one. It takes three cans of paint to cover a 250 square foot area. And if you notice, I have area and I have cans of paint. I have to have my units in there. Or I could say if I had a 250 square foot area, it would take three cans of paint. Either way is perfectly fine. Okay, now let's go to the next page. Next we need to take a quick look at function notation. We also use the notation f of x. You'll see that all the time. And remember what I told you. Let's see if it's letting me right here. f of x. Well, let me erase this. Oh, it's freezing up on me. Well, it's f of x. Oh, there we go. So that's how we do that. Now, this is see how we can represent functions, okay? So one is we can show functions as tables. So here we're giving a table, and I have these data points. Now, notice I have x is year and y is users. And usually, time is an independent or your x value because everything depends on time so the number of users here so the table below illustrates the estimated in the United States usage of the internet in millions so this user here is an in millions so I always kind of label the crap out of everything so I know what I'm talking about so what's the independent variable well the independent is going to be my x or in this case the years What's my dependent variable? Well, my dependent is the number of users in millions. Don't forget to put the unit, okay? What's your domain? Well, your domain here is going to be the years or x value. And if you'll notice, the years go from 1989, comma, and they go all the way to 2006. And notice I've got brackets here because I've been including them. This is interval notation, which we'll talk more about. The range goes from, the range is actually your number of users in millions. And it goes from 1.6 million all the way up to 205.3 million. So there's your range, your domain and range. It's as easy as that. Now, we can actually sh represent this graphically, and if you'll look at this, see how it grew quickly because internet usage grew tremendously, very fast during this, so we can show this um, graphically. But the one thing I want you to notice is, this is my x value, this is my f of x value. Notice everything's in quadrant one because life is in quadrant one. You don't want to have negative years and and negative, it doesn't make sense. So I always tell kids, put a big L for life, and a lot of times you will do all your graphing in quadrant one for anything in the real world, okay? And you can represent a function with words. Uh, most functions we come in contact with are given in words or read as words. Usually we convert functions given as words into one of the other forms. So I like to do words into tables and things because I, I like to see that. So. 
It says write the following using function notation. So it says the height above the ground of an object dropped from a building is a function of time. I love to hear a function of because then I know that's f of something. Okay? So let's say the height and it's a function of time we'll use t. So I can say height is a function of time. Now when I write it that way this is my input. Everything depends on the time. It'll tell how high we are. So my point is th. If I was going to graph this in quadrant one, my time would be here on the x-axis and my height would be here because it depends on that. Let's try another one. Write the following using function notation. The value of a car is a function of time. So we'll use v for value, t for time. So I'd say, okay, the value of a car is, is a function of time. What would be my point? t comma v. That's a comma there. If I were going to graph this in quadrant one, I'd have a t here and a v here. Okay? So let's do the next one in function notation. So it goes on to the next page. The distance traveled in one hour is a function of speed. So we'll call this distance. S for speed. And this is a function of. So I got F parentheses. So the distance is a function of speed. And yes, you got it. What's the point going to be? Speed and the distance. And if I were going to graph it, it would look just like this. The speed and the distance. Okay? Now, just to end this video, you can also write functions as formulas. So, and this is what you're used to mostly. It says given f of x is negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 1, what would be f of 3? Well, see how the 3 is in this spot and it's in that spot? So wherever there's an x, we're going to put a 3. So it's going to be negative 2 times 3 squared plus 5 times 3 plus 1. And when I do that in my calculator, I get a negative 2. f of negative 1. Yes, same thing. You put a negative 1 in the spot. So I do negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 plus 1. And if I were to put that in my calculator, I'd get a negative 6. f of r. Well, wherever there is an x, I'm going to put an r now. See, it's still in that spot, so it's going to be negative 2 r squared plus 5 r plus 1. Now, on these two right here, what I suggest and tell kids is if you put that in your calculator, you look at your table, you'd see your y value because that's your independent, that's your dependent. Because that's really the point on your graph of 3, negative 2. Because when I stuck a 3 in my function, I got a negative 2. And this is actually the point negative 1, negative 6 on my graph. Okay? Now, this is in the important part. This is one of the most important things we can do, and it's a good way to end this video, is to figure out I have the same function. I want to find f of x plus h. Well, you got it. I have to put an x plus h every single way, every single place that this x is. But what confuses kids is already an x here. So I want to write this as f of box. I'm going to rewrite it. It's negative 2 times a box squared plus 5 times a box plus 1. And wherever this x plus h is, we're going to put it in every single one of those boxes. Okay? Because really here the x is a placeholder, how it is. So th if you think of it as a box, you just throw it in. So I'm going to do is f of x plus h is going to be, throw it in the box, right? Negative 2 times x plus h squared. I threw it in the box plus 5 times x plus h plus 1. Okay? Now we're not going to leave it like that. We're going to multiply it out. So, But that's correct what we do. So I have f of x plus h. So over here I'm going to kind of do this on the side. So if I have x plus h squared, it's the same as saying x plus h times x plus h, if this lets me write. There we go. And when I get that, I have an x squared. I have an xh plus another xh. That's two xh's plus h squared. And I'm just going to put that in that spot. And then it'll be easier to multiply out. Now I'm going to do the distributive property here, plus 5x plus 5h plus 1. And then if I do the distributive, oops, sorry, do the distributive property here, when I get all done, I have f of x plus h equals negative 2x squared minus 4xh minus 2h squared plus 5x plus 5h plus 1. 
I know it looks ugly, but really that's what it is because you can't combine anything else. All right. So that's the end of this video. Congratulations.